Good morning and welcome to Noah's Window. It's Thursday, June 18th. My name is Andy Selman and I am the assistant pastor in our adult Next Step ministry area. And this is my amazing wife, Elise. And we are so excited to be with you guys this morning. Um, we enjoyed our last couple of episodes so much um, that we're, we're back. back for more. <laughs> Um, this morning, one of the things that uh, we want to talk to you about is this idea of the power of expectations. Um, because as we are starting to reopen, the reality that we all face is this, that things don't look like what we expected them to look like, do they? That we've walked through this season, and, and when we went into 2020, I know so many of us had expectations about what it was gonna look like. Um, and, and even when we went into the shutdown period, what the shutdown was gonna look like. And now as we're moving into the reopening, what the reopening is gonna look like. And maybe you had expectations about a job or a promotion or a relationship taking a step forward or your wedding looking a certain way or a transition like graduation or things like that. And and, and man, COVID-19 has, has really screwed all a lot of that up. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about the power of expectations with you um, because our expectations really do drive our emotions. And I think we underestimate that a little bit, that we underestimate the power that they have on us. And as I think about unmet expectations, I can't help but think about uh, Valentine's Day this year. Uh, we went out to dinner at a seafood restaurant, and that is a rarity because most Valentine's Days, we do not want to brave the crowds at all. But we are officially old now, so we're in our 30s. So that means that we're on grandparent time. And so we went to dinner. It was like 4, four yeah. something like that. 4, 4.30, beat the rush on Valentine's Day. And so we get to the restaurant. We're seated. And as we're eating, um, it starts to fill up and it gets to be about 5 and then 5.15 and 5.30 and it is really filling up. And you can tell that um, people are a little bit agitated. Um, and then our table happened to be right near the hostess table and pretty soon the, we the had, waiting We were area, sitting at a table like we this, a high top, table. and I had basically three people yeah. joining me for my meal yes. over three here. Three guys were fun. essentially at our table and so we just started to talk to them like they were having dinner with us because they were waiting in line. And as we were leaving, it was just interesting looking at all the people in the crowd because there were some people that you could tell they were good sports about uh, not having a table yet because they had an appetizer or a drink or something like that already there. But then there were those people that were like, man, I was supposed to be eating at five and it's now 630 and I'm still not even seated. And you just think about um, every time a hostess says, oh, um, it'll be it'll be five minutes and we'll have you at your table. And then it's 30 minutes later, just how you feel those emotions of frustration and anger um, have you ever experienced that is something I want to ask each of you today uh, to think about in your own mind, a time where your unmet expectations cause you to feel a certain way. And I really think that there's a verse in the Bible that really describes the feelings that we have when our expectations are not met. And that's out of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. And it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred, and when you hear the word hope, what I want you to hear is, I want you to hear hope is expectation that tomorrow is gonna to be better than today, that the circumstances are gonna be better than they were now. And so when that hope, when that expectation is deferred or is not met, it makes our hearts sick, doesn't it? It makes us feel like a visceral like sickness of like, man, things aren't the way that I want them to be. And then on the converse side of that, a dream fulfilled, a dream is a met expectation, is something that you are hoping for in the future. We've experienced this, these feelings of having our hope deferred or our expectations not met, haven't we, in our own lives? Absolutely. And just to give a little bit of backstory, um, personal history for us, uh, Andy and I are both from Atlanta, Georgia, and that's where we dated and got married. And when we got married, I actually had a son from a previous relationship. And so that presented many unique challenges. Uh, one of them being that the first couple years of our marriage, we were in and out of custody hearings and it was just very stressful. But around that time uh, is when we felt God's call to Kansas and specifically to New Spring Church. And we were so excited. We knew that this was where 
God wanted us and we felt called here. So Andy quit his job. We put our house up for sale and we were just, you know, moving forward. And um, what we thought might be um, an easy transition when it came to the custody disputes and issues, uh, it became this really ginormous ordeal, basically, where um, it was all or nothing. Uh, we could either bring our son with us or he was going to be in Atlanta. And I just remember that being such a bleak time in my life. Um, I did not understand why that was happening. I felt like, okay, God, we're obeying you. We're stepping out in faith and following you. So why is this happening? And um, a, a verse that brought me so much comfort during that time, it's one of my favorite verses in, in scripture, is Romans 8, 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And I honestly had a pretty immature interpretation of this scripture. I just really wanted God to change the situation. But God doesn't promise different or better circumstances. He promises us a better life. And uh, spoiler alert, we did end up getting to, I mean, God literally parted the Red Sea for us. It was miraculous and I would love to tell you more. So when campus reopens, come find me and I would love to talk about it. Um, but it was amazing. We got to bring him, but had the outcome been different, the scripture would still be just as true. And I'm so glad that God doesn't just meet my expectations. Mm -hmm. We serve a God who is in the exceedingly and abundantly more business, and I'm very grateful for that. And during that season, one of the things that, um, if you know Lisa and I, we like to explore when we go to new places, and one of the things that we like to look at is we go to like little antique uh, malls and things like that and just kind of wander around. Um, we very rarely actually buy anything, um, but we just like to look and window shop and things like that. And during that time, we were going through a antique mall back in Georgia, actually, and we saw this window and it was one of those, it was like somebody had taken a window out um, and kind of and did some window art on it and, and kind of painted some words on it. And the words said, and if not, he's still good. Yeah. And if not, he's still good. And and I I remember going back, Elise paused and, and looked at that and, and was like, and I could tell she liked it. Um, and I remember going back and getting that and just surprising that, um, surprising you with that. Um, and, and that still hangs in our house to this good day reminder. is a good reminder um, that God is still good. And I love that, that he doesn't always promise better circumstances, but he does always promise a better life. Uh, and, you know, Pastor Mark has always said, and I and I resonate so much with this, that that his life is not necessarily turned out exactly the way that he thought it would, um, but he wouldn't change it for the world, that it's always been better. So uh, the song that we're going to listen to today is from the New Spring Worship Team, and it is called The Goodness of God, because we do have such an amazingly good God.
Isn't that song amazing? I love that we have such a good God. We have a God that walks along with us in the midst of our tough circumstances. It's so good. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from a true hero of the faith, Elizabeth Elliot. Um, and Elise is nodding her head because she is very familiar with Elizabeth Elliot. So many of her books have really impacted us. And real quickly, I just want to tell you a brief just kind of bio of Elizabeth Elliot. Um, her husband was a missionary who his goal and his call on his life was to reach unreached tribes in the jungle. And they were in the process of, of trying to make contact with a tribe and, and share the gospel with them. And uh, her husband, Jim, and several other men were speared to death. Uh, there's actually a movie called End of the Spear, um, which is a great movie about this um, that I encourage you guys to, to go research their lives and, and read some of their works. Elizabeth Elliot ended up moving to that tribe that had killed her husband, moved there with her kids, and lived there, and, and ended up, God used her and her kids uh, to lead that entire tribe uh, to know the Lord. And just an amazing story of redemption and healing and faithfulness. Um, but she says in a book called God's Guidance, she says, you can always trust God to give you exactly what you would have asked for if you knew everything that he knows. And I love that quote so much, and it's been such a perspective shifter for me because it reminds me that God is, is factoring in a whole host of things that I have no clue about. That we have three boys, and, and like a parent, uh, God looks at us uh, as his children, and he is factoring in things uh, that we can't even see, just like when our boys want to have sweets all day, want to have uh, suckers and ice cream and popsicles. We understand that there's a bigger picture about uh, teeth health, body health, like that we want to set them up to thrive in their future um, as they grow older. And so we're factoring in on a small level uh, a number of factors that they can't consider. Um, and God does that with us, that he is always working, like Elise said, he's working for our good and he's always going to give us a better life. So let me pray. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Noah's Window today. Uh, it's just been uh, an honor to be with you, and I hope that this encourages you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that you step into the darkness, you step into our hard circumstances, you step into our unmet expectations, and you walk alongside us, and you love us completely and fully and unconditionally, Father. I pray that you would uh, just be with all of the people that uh, are tuning in to Noah's window today. Uh, you know each of their circumstances intimately, um, and you are there with them, Father. I pray that you would remind them uh, that they're never alone, um, and remind them that you always promise a better life. Uh, I pray that you would just continue to help us as we are each of us uh, stepping into this reopening of the world and, and figuring out what it looks like um, and figuring out things like school and work uh, and, and um, how you are gonna lead us into this next season. I pray that you would be there with us, that you would remind us um, that you are working all things for the good of your children. We lift this all up in your son Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Noah's Window this morning. We're so glad that you were a part of this conversation, and we'll see you tomorrow.